Hello, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates, and I'm going to be speaking with you today on the subject of origins of shame. The negative voice that we have inside that pushes us and shames us and criticizes us and causes us to spiral, we are not born with that. That comes from many generations of bad stuff happening and many generations of harshness and criticism and abuse and rage and shame. I <clears throat> did a writing recently about my grandfather, who uh, my mother's father, uh, who I hadn't really thought of much in my lifetime, but it, it dawned on me that much of the shame that I struggle with actually funneled through his side of the family, through my mother. So um, I wrote a piece, and then I'm going to talk about it a little bit, but I want to encourage you, <coughs> excuse me, to think about your family of origin and to think about where your shame originated. Where were you criticized? Where were you not accepted? Uh, where was there harsh messages coming from? Certainly, some of our harsh, me harsh messages can come from school or peers or siblings, but most often it comes from mom or dad or mom and dad. So here's the piece I wrote. It was uh, referencing uh, my father's, my grandfather's funeral. And this was, uh, my goodness, probably... Uh, eight, ten years ago. Uh, actually, more than that. Probably uh, ten to fifteen years ago. The honor guard shot their rifles out of respect for the man's service to his country. We were then presented with a crisply folded American flag and some shell casings. But somehow all the pomp and circumstances didn't really match the man I had known. For the man I had known was a rigid, curmudgeonly old bastard, my granddad. The man I knew was too small to receive any feedback, and his rage could turn him into an irrational bully at the drop of a hat. It saddens me to think of my mother's free spirit when she was a child at the mercy of this father imposter, this thug. And I'm sad to know that she ultimately, in many ways, became just like him. I think that the truth of a person should be spoken spoken of clearly and loudly and graciously and firmly at their funeral instead of niceties and white lies. The truth was that the man I knew was the abandoned son of a family of harsh, rigid, black and white thinking, vicious, Catholic little Dutch folks. Um, their particular brand of faith uh, was was very black and white. Uh, I think there were three uh, nuns in the family, lifelong nuns in the family. The man I knew was a sad little man, a man whose arrogance ultimately humiliated and defeated him. The man I knew who could not, he could not handle the truth and he could not really pay attention. He, he was a man isolated from the world. Not to say that my grandfather was an all bad man. He maintained a very beautiful garden right across the street from St. Joe Hospital in Kokomo. 
he had a very cute little comedy routine starring Arthur, his uh, little troll with green hair. He would come out with Arthur and say, um, Arthur's not hungry, and he doesn't think we should go out to dinner tonight. He thinks we should just have water and toothpicks. Um, he also owned several successful clothing stores that he had built with my grandmother. But ultimately, this was a man who was only much loved by his very patient, long-suffering, codependent wife, my grandmother. This wounded little man set the course of my shame-based life by all but destroying the touchstone of my ragged childhood, my mother. I could support the 21-gun salute, the praise, the honor. I could support it more if, if the truth were told. And while the truth can be dark and it can be gritty, it's so much more real, it's so much more alive, and it's so much more connecting than the normal shallow nonsense that gets spoken at most funerals. So I have a question, folks who are watching this video. What's the truth about you? What are, what are your blind spots? What words of truth should be spoken at your funeral, should that arrive. And the truth is, it could arrive for any of us at any moment. Who are you in your marriage? How do you treat your spouse? What's, what's the truth of how you act in your marriage? What do your children need that they're not getting from you? How were you wounded as a child? We all were. What scars are you trying to cover up? And what addictions or defenses are you using in order to cover up? What, what is the truth about you? At Family Tree, we espouse a program of a lifestyle really of recovery and recovery is simply that it's simply knowing who you are knowing where you came from knowing the truth about you and then working very effectively not not fastly <laughs> it, it's a slow process but working every day effectively to address the truth about you, the issues that you have. That's what recovery is. When we think of recovery, many times we think of alcoholics or drug addicts, but everybody you know, including yourself, could benefit from knowing the truth about themselves and then healing the root cause of those issues. So recovery works by having stunning, life-changing, crisp, clear, penetrating insight into who you are and where you came from and why you married who you married and who your spouse is. That's how recovery starts, is powerful insight. The second thing that happens in recovery is you get to meet the wounded little kid at your core. So often I'll get I'll get a new client and and uh, they don't want to be crazy, <laughs> they don't want to be normal, they don't want to be dysfunctional. They want to believe the press that they've their press clippings that they've saved that you know I have a big house and a pretty wife and I make a lot of money and I have a cool car. <clears throat> My kids are good looking. I'm smart. I'm usually the smartest guy in the room. I can't be screwed up. You might be the most screwed up guy in the room if, if all those things are true and you don't know what your issues are. We all have a wounded little kid at our core, and the next step of recovery is having 
uh, those wounds surface. And uh, many times it means having a good long cry from the core of your being and it'll just wash you out. It's a wonderful thing. It takes a lot of courage to go there. Most of us would rather, you know, take a pill or go exercise or watch uh, a movie or drink five beers than feel our emotional pain. But our feeling your emotional pain and knowing uh, gracious, loving truths about yourselves, that's what heals our shame. Uh, I was working with a fellow uh, last week, and, and he really has been brainwashed. He was brainwashed by his parents, uh, very much so like if he were in a cult. And everything he does is based on that programming. And he's not nice to himself. He's very harsh and driven with himself. And, and sometimes he exports that to his wife, even though by nature he's, he's a very sweet man. So insight for this fellow was relax, chill out, have fun, don't worry, it's going to be all right, it's going to be good, it's all good. Um, rather than, you know, strive and strive and strive to be good enough and don't rest for a moment and bludgeon yourself with too much work. So... Uh, Letting that wounded little kid surface and being angry at the people you should be angry with. And for most of us, that does mean some anger with the parents who hurt us the most, who set the course of our lives and who set the template of who were we going to be attracted to and who we were going to marry. Um, our love lives are set and calibrated by the wounds of our childhood. So I wish you recovery. I wish you grace and much insight and lots of crying and, and lots of getting non-victimy angry and having a voice uh, and asking for goodies. I watched a movie last night. It was James Gandolfini's, uh, Gandolfini's last movie, Tony Soprano, uh, before he uh, um, you know, died so suddenly and so tragically of a heart attack. And uh, uh, Julie uh, Dreyfus uh, was his girlfriend in the movie, and she was a massage therapist. And every day she, or every week she had this, this client and that she had to carry her very heavy table up, you know, 40 steps of a, of a staircase. And she always wanted his help, but she never asked. And finally, one, and then she resented it. Finally, one day she said, could you help me? And he fell all over himself going, oh, I'm an idiot. I'm so sorry. I got it. I'll help you. And that's, that's what healthy entitlement and healing your shame will do, is it'll, it'll help you to ask for more goodies. Whether it's um, really small things, like help with the massage table, or uh, good love from your baby, good love from your significant other, your spouse, uh, to, for them to meet your needs and to say it vulnerably and attractively and not critically. So uh, this is where shame comes from. It, it comes from generations. I'm not wanting to paint my grandfather as the source of all of the problems in my family. I, like I said, I did have the sense that his, his family was harsh. First of all, I think there were 11 of them. So you know he was abandoned and not nurtured. And, and they were Dutch, and, and, and there are stereotypes about Dutch folks, about you know, having issues with money and fear around money. And uh, certainly my grandfather had that. And he, and he did have uh, a lot of shame and a lot of rage, but he came by it honestly. Um, I think in his family, if you weren't a priest or a nun, you were suspect at best. You're not quite good enough. 
and I think there must have been some real meanness and criticism directed his way. And he passed it on, and my mother passed it on to me, and I'm sure I passed on, you know, some of it to my children. And while our parents uh, caused the wounds, we're left to clean up the mess because it's our lives. And in anybody else's life, you've got to clean up your own business, your own side of the street. So I encourage you to work on your shame and your recovery and helping you gain that insight. One of the best things you can do would be to download my book on shame, Healing Toxic Shame Through Recovery. It's very simple to do this. You just come to our website, FamilyTreeCounseling.com. And right at the top, there's a picture of the book and a link that says click here if you want to buy it. It'll bring you right to the store uh, at ClickBank. And you'll have a downloaded PDF file. Plus, there's two other books that are thrown in for free. One on marriage and one on sort of the basics of recovery. So you get three books. And you'll have them within three minutes. It downloads really fast and uh, probably works best on an iPad, but it certainly will work on a phone or a laptop or a regular computer as well. But it'll help you. In the book, there's a great deal of discussion about what shame is. There's 12 really in-depth and pretty biting clinical examples. And then there's discussion about the many ways shame has haunted me, including stories about my, my granddad. And finally, there's discussion about the process of recovery and how recovery works. If you haven't joined our YouTube uh, channel, do so. It's exploding. We've got 600 subscribers now. One day last week, we had over 800 views. And of course, I've got all my staff participating now, or most of them, where Kathy Henry's making videos, excellent ones, and Christy Alioso, Eloso, I think I said it wrong, and uh, Javon Lockhart and Andy Holzman are joining uh, Jerry Wise and I in making videos, and you'll love their stuff. They're very insightful. They'll give you the same material that Jerry and I are given, but just with their particular style, so it'll enrich in the message that you're getting. Do visit our website, FamilyTreeCounseling.com. We've got uh, links to like nine different blogs. We have podcasts. We have videos. We have over 300 articles you could read. We were recently named one of the top 100 most helpful websites for marriage and family therapy. And we were ranked like 55 out of 100. So there's just a lot of great information that's free. So... Um, I am available, as are my uh, other associates. We are available for Skype appointments all over the English-speaking world. If you need a la another language, I cannot help you with that. But if you speak English, um, wherever you are in the world, um, I've been having appointments with people all across the world, and it comes across as crisply and as uh, perfectly as if they were in the next room. And it works quite well. It works almost as well as somebody walking into my office. It's amazing technology. So just throw me an email at familytreecounseling at juno.com and we can set up a Skype session. Um, I'm headed off on Wednesday morning to Clearwater Beach for my annual pilgrimage to the beach to begin a, a new project. Last year, I began the shame book on Valentine's Day. And this year, I'm going a little later. I'm taking my significant other. It's her birthday. And uh, I'm going to begin a project. I'm going to do an audio book this time. And it's going to be on a fair recovery. I'm going to take the, the book I have, The Secret to Healing Your Marriage After an Affair, and double the size of it and make it into an audio book download. And because I've gotten a lot of feedback that it'll not, not only be a lot more convenient for the, the non sit and reader, you know, group of us, which includes me, by the way, and also it might be a little less traumatic. Sometimes reading, if you have a lot of wounds, can be difficult. And if you can listen, you can soak it in, listen to it three or four times, and sort of lower the dosage of the intense insight. So I wish you well. 
I wish you that you would lessen your shame and live a really blessed and prosperous and happy life. Thank you so much for watching the video and for supporting our work here. And uh, uh, download that book. And thank you so much for doing so. God bless.